Welcome to chapter one reading of Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. So this chapter begins the first part of the book. It's broken down into different parts. So part one is the old buccaneer. And we've already looked at our map. So this first chapter is the old sea dog at the Admiral Bimbo. Squire Trelawney, Dr. Livesey, and the other gentlemen, having asked me to write down the whole story about Treasure Island, keeping nothing back but the bearings, because there's still treasure there, I take up my pen in the year 17 blank and go back to the time when my father kept the Admiral Bembo in and the old seaman with the saber cut across his cheek first lodged under our roof. Now, guys, he refuses to tell exactly which year this was. And he won't tell the exact location of Treasure Island because he says there is still treasure buried there. I remember him plodding to the end door, bringing his sea chest behind him. A tall, strong, heavy, nut-brown man, his hands scarred with black, broken nails. He looked round, whistled to himself, and then broke into that old sea song he sang so often afterwards. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest, yo-ho-ho ho, and a bottle of rum. Then he rapped on the door with a stick, and when my father appeared, called roughly for a glass of rum. He drank it slowly, looking out at the cliffs and at our sign. This is a handy cove, says he. Much company, mate? Father told him no, very little. Well then, said he, this is the berth for me. I'll stay here a bit. I'm a plain man, he continued. Rum and bacon and eggs is what I want and a place to watch ships. You can call me captain. And he threw down four gold pieces. Tell me when I've worked through it, says he, looking fierce as a commander. So what he has done Four gold pieces was far more money than what he would have eaten at that moment, but he paid in advance four gold pieces to be able to drink rum and eat bacon and eggs. And all he really wanted was to watch ships go by. And he wanted to be called captain. And when he says that this is the birth for me, this is not birth as in I'm a child is born kind of a birth. This is birth as in a place to stay. Okay, so the Admiral Benbow is the name of an inn, and an inn is where you can stay overnight, kind of like a hotel, and eat. And, it, and this one, it also kind of had a bar in it, okay? Indeed, bad as his clothes were, and as coarsely as he spoke, he seemed like a mate or skipper, accustomed to being obeyed. He was a silent man. All day he hung round the cove with a brass telescope. All evening he sat by the fire and drank rum. Mostly he would not speak when spoken to. He would just look up sudden and fierce. He soon learned to let, or we soon learned to let him be. Every day he would ask if any seafaring men had gone by on the road. So a seafaring man would be a man used to being on a ship at sea. At first, we thought he wanted company of his own kind, but at last we began to see he wanted to avoid them. For me, there was no secret about this. He had taken me aside and promised me a silver penny on the first of every month if I would keep my weather eye open for a seafaring man with one leg and let him know the moment he appeared. Often, when I asked him for my wage, he would stare me down, but later he would bring me my coin and repeat his orders. Okay, so in other words, the captain, right, is asking Jim. So when I'm speaking and reading this book, I am Jim Hawkins. That's who is narrating this story. So it's everything that's being said when he's saying, I did this, I did that. This is Jim Hawkins speaking. Okay, so... This man who wants to be called captain is paying Jim to keep an eye out for a seafaring man. How the man with one leg haunted my dreams. 
<sighs> on stormy nights when the wind shook the house and the surf roared in the cove, I would see him in a thousand forms. Now the leg would be cut off at the knee, now at the hip. To see him leap and pursue me was the worst nightmare. I paid pretty dear for my monthly penny. Oops, sorry. In the shape of those terrible dreams. So meaning he was getting paid a penny a month to keep an eye out for this one-legged man. But as time went on, this one-legged man became the man who haunted his dreams. So Jim Hawkins is having nightmares of this one-legged man. But I was far less afraid of the captain himself than anybody else who knew him. There were nights when he took more rum than his head would carry. Then he would sing his wild sea songs and force the trembling company to sing a chorus. Often I heard the house shaking with yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. All the neighbors joining in with the fear of death upon them. So in other words, if they didn't sing along with him, they feared he would kill them for it. His stories frightened people worst of all. They were about hanging and storms at sea and wild deeds on the Spanish main. He must have lived among some of the wickedest men ever on the sea. The language in which he told these stories shocked our plain country people almost as much as the crimes he described. He stayed month after month so that the money had been long exhausted. So he's far stayed past what those four gold coins would have allowed. If my father ever mentioned money, the captain roared and stared him out of the room. I am sure that the terror my father lived in greatly hastened his death. So his dad was fearful of the captain, so much so that he gave up trying to get his money from him. And so you guys know that it's the Spanish main, when it right here where it's in capital letters, it's talking about a place, okay? And that is the name for Spanish claimed lands along the coast of South America and the Caribbean. All the time he lived with us, the captain changed nothing in his dress but his stockings, meaning he always wore the same clothes and didn't clean them. His coat, which he patched himself by the end was nothing but patches. He was only once crossed when my poor father was very ill. Dr. Livesey came to see his patient, took a bit of dinner, and went into the parlor to smoke a pipe. I remember observing the contrast the neat doctor with his bright eyes and pleasant manners made with that filthy scarecrow of a pirate sitting for gone in rum. Suddenly the captain began his eternal or external song. Fifteen men on the dead man's chest, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum, drinking the devil had done for the rest, yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Now Dr. Livesey looked up angrily before he went on talking to old Taylor, the gardener. The captain flapped his hand upon the table in a way we all know to mean silence. All the voices stopped at once, but Dr. Livesey's. Now he went on speaking clear and kind, drawing at his pipe between every word or two. The captain glared at him, flapped his hand again and yelled, silence there between decks. Were you addressing me, sir? Asked the doctor. I have only one thing to say to you. If you keep on drinking rum, the world will soon be quit of a very dirty scoundrel. The old fellow's fury was awful. He sprang to his feet, drew a knife, and threatened to pin the doctor to the wall. The doctor never moved. He spoke so that everyone might hear. If you don't put that knife this instant in your pocket, I promise on my honor, you shall hang. Then followed a battle of looks between them. Soon the captain put up his weapon and sat down grumbling like a beaten dog. I'll have an eye on you day and night, said the doctor. I'm a magistrate. If I catch a breath of complaint against you, I'll hunt. I'll have you hunted down. Now, soon after, Dr. Livesey 
rode away, but the captain held his peace that evening and for many evenings to come. So a magistrate, well, we'll just read it. A magistrate is a civil officer or a lay judge who administers the law. So kind of like our police officers, if you will. He would conduct a court that deals with minor offenses and holds preliminary charges and proceedings. So in other words, if he felt that this captain was a criminal, he could prosecute him and have him hanged. So do you think that that kind of scared the captain maybe a little bit? Probably so, because it says he held his peace, meaning he he didn't act wild and crazy after that for quite a while, for many evenings to come, it says. All right, our next chapter will be Black Dog Appears and Disappears. <laughs>